Welcome to today's webinar, Tips for Grading Resumes for the Career Kickoff Resume Assignment. My name is Amelinda Rosito and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Associate Director for Programming and Career Everywhere at the Center for Career Development. I'm really happy to be here with you all today, so thanks so much for joining us. Today I am joined by my colleague and I'm going to turn it over to him to introduce himself. Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Peterson. I'm the Assistant Director for Career Coaching and Counseling at the Center for Career Development. Today I'm actually going to be going over the resources that you can use as you look at resumes, some basic formatting things, and also bullet point development. All right, so before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate today. You should see your attendee interface on your computer desktop. It should be in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Um, you're listening and using your computer speaker system by default. If you prefer to join in over the phone, just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions today by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. They'll all be addressed during the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. And note that today's presentation is being recorded and will be emailed to all of you within 24 hours. So today we're going to focus on giving you resources that we think are helpful for you as you grade your students' resumes for the assignment. For those of you that are new, we'll start off with a brief overview of the assignment and what you need to know. And for those of you that are returning, we have a few updates, so the information that we're providing, some of it may be new to you. We're going to be showing you some helpful resources that will help you as you're grading the resumes, specifically things that focus on the guidelines for basic formatting and bullet point development. This is all information that we've received from employers and what they're looking for when they're hiring UConn graduates. And then we will open it up for a question and answer session and um, answer any questions that you all have today. We have a few assignment logistics to run through with you. We've decided that for the fall semester, the assignment will continue to be virtual. This is just the best course of action right now. There's just so much uncertainty that we decided that we would move forward with a virtual assignment. First year programs will automatically upload the assignment to your Husky CT class site. However, if you've decided to carry over a previous semester course, then the assignment will not get copied into your Husky CT class site. So you'll just have to let us know and we will copy that assignment over for you. You will be able to sign up for the assignment starting in June. First year programs will send out an email to all of you with a sign up sheet. Once you sign up, you will need to send us your class roster. We use the class roster to tag students in handshakes to give them proper access to the appointment type um, when they're scheduling their resume critique. We have extended the time frame of the assignment this year um, since we have 2,000 students scheduling appointments with us for this assignment alone. The assignment is starting earlier and it's starting in September, which some of you will be really happy about. And it will end in December, the first week of December to be exact. Lastly, for those of you that are also instructors for international FYE sections, we just want to let you know that that's a completely different assignment and I'm happy to speak with you one-on-one -on -one about that assignment if you have any more questions. This year, the assignment is six steps. The first part is to watch a career kickoff webinar. This would normally be our 50-minute in-class presentation, but it translates to about 30 minutes to a webinar. Following that, they'll complete a Mythbusters quiz, which is associated with the information that they learned in the webinar. Following that, they will upload their resume to Handshake, and then they'll schedule a 20-minute virtual resume critique with our office. Now, last year, they completed 10-minute virtual resume reviews, and we just got feedback that that wasn't enough time, and the students wanted more time with their peer counselors, so we've extended this time to 20 minutes. Following that, they will update their resume, based off of what they've learned from the webinar as well as the 20-minute resume critique, and then they'll submit a final draft to you all. We do get the question often, not only from students, but also from parents. Why now? Why are we working on a resume? Shouldn't we wait until our junior or senior year when this information is more relevant? Now, we know that you all know the answer to this, but we think it's important for our message at the Center for Career Development to match the message that you also give to students when they ask this question. So typically what we tell students and parents is that the resume is so much more than just a document that you use to track everything that you've done. It really should be used as a roadmap throughout your time at UConn. 
Resumes not only highlight your top skills, but they also illuminate the areas where you would like to grow and develop. So during your time at UConn, you find new roads or opportunities that will help you build these skill sets. Building your undergraduate resume as a first year student allows you to look ahead and map out the different opportunities that are available to you. Okay, so let's move on to resources. During today's session, we are going to provide you with a lot of good information, but we also have two really great resources that you can reference after today's session. So I'm going to walk you through them. So you first start off by going to career.ucon.edu. From there, you will select who we serve. Once the drop down menu appears, select undergraduate students. Then select write a resume. That will bring you to these two main resources we'd like to share with you all today. The first one is our resume and cover letter guidebook. Anytime we meet with a student for a resume critique, they get a physical copy of this book. However, this is very helpful for you to use as your grading resumes, but also to refer your students to if they have any questions. The guidebook covers everything that we're sharing with you today. The other resource we have is our resume sample binder. This contains sample resumes organized by content area, academic interests, and career interests. This resource also includes an undergraduate major and corresponding degrees cheat sheet for resumes. I'm throwing the link for both of these in the chat. All right, so now I am going to pass it on to Erin, who is going to go over resumes, what you should know, and how you can grade them. Moving on to the critique process, there are a number of things to keep in mind when critiquing a student's resume. Um, the one thing that I like to remind students of if I'm working with them one-on-one -on -one, is that the critique is not a critique on them personally, it's a critique on the written document. Um, and keep in mind also that there are very few rules when it comes to resumes. Um, a lot of the things that we'll talk about, I would consider to be best practices. Um, we're going to go over it with more detail what some of those quote unquote rules are. Um, but just keep in mind that students will hear conflicting things about resumes from their peers, family members, our office, um, and all this stuff is very normal. We just like to let students know that the resume really is a marketing tool. Um, and we want to be able to have them show their best selves and most professional selves in this brief written document. Now, when we work with students during a 20 minute resume critique, there's rarely enough time to go over every single thing on the resume. So what we actually do is we try to break the resume into two separate things. We're either gonna discuss the format of the resume, which includes the overall organization and layout, um, what the fonts and font sizes are, are things consistent, is it visually appealing? Um, or we're gonna focus on the content of the resume. Um, that's usually a deeper conversation, but that has to do with what categories they're including on the resume, how the bullet point statements are looking, um, and whether or not that resume is tailored for a specific thing that they're, uh, that they're applying to. So we're gonna go over both of these things, uh, these items together today, um, formatting and content. Generally speaking, the format of the resume has more clear cut rules and best practices than the content area. Um, we consider the formatting to be kind of the easy part of the resume where content is a little bit more complicated. So let's go over some of the basic rules when it comes to formatting. Keeping in mind that the resume really does serve as a marketing tool for the student when they're applying to jobs, internships, scholarships, and things like that, we want to make sure that the information is easily readable. Um, so some of the best practices when it comes to the overall setup and format of the resume are consistency, the font and font size, the margins, and the length. So consistency being probably the most important of these components, and that is just being consistent with the format of where the dates are located, where the locations are located, um, how the position titles are presented, the use of bold and italic, using it sparingly, but using it very consistently. And I'll show you some uh, examples of how this all comes together. Uh, for font and font size, we really encourage students to use between 10 and 12 point font um, uh, throughout the entire document. 
The only exception would be the name, which can be a little bit larger. Oftentimes that's bold. Um, and we encourage students to use common fonts. So Times, Garamond, Arial, kind of those normal fonts that you may see. Uh, margins are also really important. Uh, so we want to make sure that the margins are equal on both the top and the bottom of the resume and they match the margin sizes on the sides. Uh, to maximize space, students can use half inch margins um, or they can go up to one inch margins if they're trying to uh, take up more room on the page with margins. Generally speaking, the length of the resume is one page. Uh, this is not necessarily a rule. Um, but for most undergraduate students, a one-page resume should be the target length for a resume. Let's take a look at this sample resume and look at some of the formatting things that are going on in here. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it's well organized. Um, section titles are underlined in this case. Uh, the dates are sitting on the right-hand margin. Um, the organization name is bold for every single organization and the job title is italicized for each job title. So these are the things that make the resume very skimmable from the employer's stand, uh, point of view. If the employer is curious as to what the job titles are that this student had, as soon as they identify that that's what's italicized, they can see all of those very quickly. Now this does not mean that every resume needs to have italicized job titles. All that matters is that whatever the student decides to do with the information, they continue to do that throughout the document. So italici italics is, seems to be used in this one and that's perfectly fine. Um, one of the other things that you'll notice is that uh, the font and font size is the same throughout with the exception of the name which tends to be just a little bit bigger. Uh, so those are usually the main things that we're skimming for just to see, well, is it is it laid out well? Is it easy to understand? Um, are things consistently presented? Once we've identified that the formatting looks good, that's when we move into the content area of the resume. Content tends to be a little bit more complex um, and takes a little bit more thought and effort um, to get it right. So a lot of times we'll spend the majority of our time when we're working with students on making sure they understand how to develop that content and um, what are some of the tricks and strategies that they can use to make sure that uh, the content is meaningful and relevant. Now many of the resumes that you'll be looking at, um, the purpose of that resume is to complete an assignment. Um, but some students might be actually using their resume to apply for something like an internship, scholarship, or a part-time job. Um, so throughout this presentation, you may see uh, words like relevancy, um, tailored. So that's really important when, the, when it's being written for something very specific. Um, but for general resumes, uh, it, things don't necessarily need to be tailored. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, when setting up a resume, and you're trying to do it tailored, it's, you can use a lot of, there's a lot of liberty that um, one can use when determining what categories to use. We're gonna go over categories in the next slide, um, but these categories are used to separate types of experience. So the categories should be listed in order of relevancy, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like in a little while. Um, and within each one of these categories, those experiences should be listed in reverse chronological order. So starting with things that are present tense, and then working backwards in time um, as far as showing the cr reverse chronological order of uh, when someone did something. Another really important thing is to make sure that the what we call the core four are included within each one of these experiences. And so that would be the organization or company name, uh, the location where that company is, the position title that the student held at that organization and then what date range uh, month and year to month and year was that uh, experience done and I'll show you this in a sample but that's what we usually refer to um, the other thing to just keep in mind is that bullet point statements can take a lot of time to develop really well and the students that you look at they might not be quite 
as developed as you would hope they would be. Um, but sometimes students must, they meet with us on a number of occasions to further de uh, develop what the bullet point statements sound like. Now bullet point statements, the entire point of them is to demonstrate a skill um, and less important is what task that they did. So we'll go over that in depth in a little while. Um, but just so you know, that's usually where the majority of the time is put into uh, when developing a resume. There are a few things to avoid on a resume. So in the US, we do not list things like age, weight, marital status. Um, we don't have images of ourselves on our resumes with some exceptions. I mean, I think that if a student were applying to a modeling agency or something like that, um, a headshot might be appropriate. But for the purposes of this assignment, um, we want to we probably do not want to see headshots on resumes. We also tell students to avoid using templates um, because templates sometimes, most times, include tables, grids, um, and images and colors, um, and this can have uh, ramifications when it comes to uploading resumes to big corporations that might be using software to scan those resumes. That's called applicant tracking uh, systems. So we encourage students to just create a blank Word document uh, and input the information from the top down uh, and not use resume templates. One of the main reasons why people use templates is because they're just not sure what categories that they should include on their resume. Um, they're not sure what content is appropriate to be included um, and how it should be laid out. And a lot of folks just think that there are specific rules when it comes to resumes and that a template will ensure that they're meeting those rules. So. All of these categories are actually included in the resume and cover letter guidebook um, on our website, but we go over in there which categories are appropriate on a resume, which ones um, you would not have on a resume, but this is not even uh, an exhaustive list of the types of categories that you can have on a resume. Uh, so you might see all sorts of variances when looking at the different sections that students kind of come up with. But these are the main ones that we encourage students to utilize just to be able to organize their information and show where these experiences happened. Within each one of those categories, likely you'll see experiences listed there. Hopefully those experiences include the core four. Um, and then under the core four, which as a reminder, the core four is the organization name and its location, the job title or functional title, and the dates that that job title was held. At, underneath that is where these bullet point statements appear. Now bullet point statements, as I had mentioned before, take a little while to develop, um, but we're gonna go over what the um, important co components of a bullet point statement are so that you can be on the lookout to make sure that students um, have absorbed that information and are trying their best to articulate it on their resume. Before we even get into building a bullet point statement, I like to share with students that the entire point of bullet point statements is to show a skill and where you use that skill. So many times bullet point statements are really used to show what we call transferable skills. Some people call them soft skills or life skills. Um, but it's very difficult to prove to someone that you have problem-solving skills just by listing problem-solving skills in a skills area. So instead of listing problem-solving skills in a skills area, we like to have students show that they utilize problem-solving skills throughout it through a task that they may have done in a job or internship, volunteer activity, um, or some activity on campus. So although this is not an exhaustive list of transferable skills, these tend to be the most commonly sought after skills in job postings. And these are the ones that we try to focus students around so that they can start showing that they have these skills through action. You can find a great list of these action verbs in our resume and cover letter guidebook on page seven. Once the student has determined which transferable skills they would like to show on their resume, 
Then it comes time to start building that bullet point statement. One of the best things a student can do is start a bullet point statement with an action verb that means the skill that they're trying to show. So for instance, if they're trying to show that they have communication skills, they might start a bullet point with the word correspond with. If they're trying to show that they have leadership skills, they might start a bullet point with managed. By doing this, they're showing the skill without blatantly saying used leadership skills to or used communication skills to. It's masked within the bullet point, but it shows that they have a specific skill and then when they use that skill. Within each and every bullet point statement, we really like to see three different components. What, how, and why. Now the how part, the skill part, it really is the most important part of the bullet point statement. Um, but many bullet point statements start with the task. Um, so when you see a resume that really hasn't been um, edited or critiqued, uh, a lot of times the bullet point statements will just be lists of tasks that um, that student had completed at a job. And it's not including the skill that was used uh, to complete that task. Um, another important component of the bullet point, though, is the why, or the what was the end result. Um, this really rounds out the bullet point, and it shows the reader that that applicant understands the larger implications of um, the reason why they're being asked to perform those specific tasks. So if we look at this example at the bottom, compiled and proofread all written documents to streamline departmental resources. This bullet point we would consider as a uh, well-developed bullet point because it includes the what, how, and why. So the what did I do was I compiled and proofread all written documents. How did I do that? Well, that's pretty evident in the, uh, the two words compiled and proofread, which show both organizational skills and written communication skills. And then why was it being done? And that was to streamline departmental resources. So these are the types of bullet points that you should be on the lookout for that show you that that student has um, gone through the what, how, and why process uh, to develop that bullet point statement. When we go back to the same sample that we used earlier for formatting, we can see how the content is also pretty well developed on this particular sample resume. So, if we look under the category work experience, we can see the core four uh, appearing right there. So we have Mansfield Parks and Recreation. That's the organization name and its location, which we just used the town and the state. Um, you can also see here the uh, job title, Camp Counselor. And we can also see that the uh, job title or that experience went from June 2000 whatever to present. And this, this accomplishes that, what we call the core four. Now, it doesn't have to be in this order. It can go in a number of different orders, but we want to make sure that all four of those pieces of information are up there. Underneath that, we see some well-developed bullet points here. So if we look at the first one, we can see all three elements um, correspond with parents on behalf of the director via in-person communication, telephone, or email. Now, this one arguably is missing the the why, but not all bullet points have to have all three elements. Um, the thing that's nice about this is that we have the action verb correspond with, um, meaning that the student used uh, communication skills for that. Uh, if we look down under the big why one, we see managed a cash register. So there's the uh, leadership component kind of emerging there. Um, we also can see that the, uh, the section the sections here, work experience, activities, volunteer experience, skills, and interests are in here. And so this student has broken up uh, work experience from activities, from volunteer experience, um, for the purposes of this resume. Now, it would not be that uncommon um, for someone to, instead of having a work experience section, to have a section that's entitled relevant experience which could also include work experience, but potentially could include that volunteer experience down there if that were relevant enough to the position. 
With it, within each one of these sections, you'll notice that uh, the dates go in reverse chronological order with present tense being um, on the top. So that's another thing just to be on the lookout for, making sure that things are going backwards in time. Um, so that kind of summarizes the main components of developing that content, uh, bullet points being kind of the focal point in that discussion. Thank you for going over that content with us, Aaron. We're now going to talk about the resume rubric. We have developed a rubric to help you as you grade resumes. You can find a copy of this rubric in the handout section of the control pane. The rubric is divided in a way that focuses on the components of the resume with clear descriptions on what to look for. Now we don't recommend that you share this with your students and we highly suggest that you only use this for the purpose of grading. We really don't want students to think that they need a rubric in the future when they're updating or completing their resumes throughout their professional careers. That wraps up our content for tips on grading resumes, so we're now going to move into the question and answer session. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So we'll give you all a few minutes to submit questions.